Hello YouTube. <clears throat> I've uh, been watching some modifications for the Lee Pro 1000 uh, press. One of them is to capture uh, new primers that uh, happen to fall into the uh, the RAM, which the RAM is a storage area for spent primers whenever you're decapping your, your uh, brass. Well, uh, uh, a guy on YouTube, Hunt for Fun 100, posted a video, and I'm going to do his, the modification that he done. And basically, you take 30 out six casing. This one just happens to be a damaged casing, as you can tell. Okay, and I've got an old bullet here that I'm going to use. Uh, it's 30 caliber. It's a pulled uh, from some old ammo. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some lube on it, you know, right up through my 30 out 6 die and uh, uh, try to size it at, uh, where I can seat this bullet back in. And then the other steps is basically he removes the primer pocket area. Um, <clears throat> he used a 8 millimeter drill bit to drill out the primer pocket and then uh, a way to chamfer it, which I'll use my Lyman electric prep station that's got the inside chamfering tool on it. That should be well enough to do that. And he drills a small hole and puts a wire on it so uh, uh, he can pull it back up out of his load master. I'll take you through the steps of it and uh, try to do this so everybody can see. Like I said, it's a simple modification. Uh, and I know I've seen some posts on Facebook on some uh, uh, reloading uh, sites, groups. The guys talking about they open up the bottom of the RAM to empty their uh, pr uh, spent primers out and they find a lot of uh, good primers that have been dropped in because the primer feeding system, you know, uh, dropped one or two or you know depending on how many you were loading you know if you don't clean anything but once every month or something uh, you could have quite a few uh, new primers in it so uh, let me get started on this and get the camera set up so you can see what I'm doing okay like I said I'm gonna take the Lee Lou paste don't need a lot just a little bit Take this old, this is an old military, uh, FA-53, so that means it was made back in 53. FA is for the uh, manufacturing comp uh, location of where this brass was made. So I sit there and I just lube this up. I don't care if I get it on the shoulder or not. Okay, like I said, it doesn't take much. I don't care if I get it on the shoulder or not. I'm just trying to size this case, try to get the neck where I can put a, a bullet in it. Now, I've got my 30 out 6 die set up on uh, my turret press. It's four hole Lee turret. Of course, I've removed the auto indexing rod. That's the one thing about using a Lee four hole turret press for uh, rifle brass is you, especially something as long as a 30 out 6 case, uh, you have to remove the indexing rod. It will not clear. Whenever uh, you're in your sizing decapping die and you run it up, if you've got the indexing rod in it, when you start coming back down, <clears throat> the indexing rod starts to turn and your case gets caught. So anytime you do rifle dies, anything up to a 30 out 6 case or larger than a 30 out 6 case longer, uh, yeah, I think you can do 308s, but uh, 303s. You can probably do 30-30s okay with the indexing rod in it. But anything as long as a 30-06 case or getting close to that or longer, you need to remove the auto indexing rod. So I'm going to take this up and size it. Like I said, that thing had a, a bad spot on the neck. And, you know, it's not removed. That bad spot's still there, as you can see. But like I said, for what this is going to be for, uh, it uh, doesn't matter. This is just going to be for K 
catching spent primers. Okay, now what I'm going to do now, so like I said, I got this old 30 caliber bullet. That's a lead tip. I think it's 180 grain. Uh, put that in there. Rotate press around to the bullet seating die. And that's another thing too when you're loading 30 out 6 in a four hole turn press is you have to actually put the bullet up in the die instead of on the case mouth. Uh, that's the reason why it probably is beneficial to just load rifle uh, anything 30 out 6 or that size in a single stage press. Uh, I've done it on the turret press. I don't have a problem. I'm not trying to do mass production. Uh, and I rotate the turrets manually. So, And I can get just as good quality ammo. Uh, I know one guy posted about uh, on YouTube that you can't get good quality ammo running it through a turret press or possibly a progressive press like the Loadmaster because of the steps. And I'm sitting there, you know, all my brass when I load rifle especially is all trimmed primer pockets are cleaned they're de uh, uh, decrimped if they're military brass uh, they're uniformed all my brass is trimmed all my brass is clean before I load rifle dies or rifle ammo uh, that's the reason why I can do it on a turret and feel comfortable I'm operating it as a single stage press and I check my powder charges, you know, I use the Lee uh, auto disc and I'm good with my powder charges, depending on the powder you use. So I have no problem. So I'm going to seat this bullet. I'm not worried about where it's seated, but I thought I'd at least get it down to the cantaloupe so it looks like a loaded round. Okay, and then I'm going to put a crimp just to hold that bullet in place. Okay, so here we go. Looks like a loaded round, but it's not. Again, there's no, uh, no primer. Now, what I'm going to do, I'll turn this camera around. Here is the uh, Lyman prep station. I'm going to turn it on. I haven't drilled it yet, as you can see, but I can really open up that primer pocket to where I can get that drill bit in there. Now, one little secret I'll tell you, too, if you have this, and right here is the uh, crimp remover for uh, crimp primers. Of course, this is the carbon cleaner for the primer pocket pocket uniform uh, bit. If you have uh, some of the military brass that's got the, uh, uh, instead of just being crimped all the way around, it's got the four dimples in it. This here gets real jerky, trying to get that out. It's being very, very careful, you can put that right on here and cut that out, then go to this, then go to this, and then go to your uh, uniform bit. But be very careful. You see right there, I did that. Now look at that. There's no way you're ever going to put a primer in that now because you've made it way too big. But that's not what this is for. Okay, I got to get the drill set up. And as soon as I get the drill set up, I'll show you that next step. Okay, I'm back. I've put an 8 millimeter drill bit in the drill. I'm holding this with a pair of channel locks. And I'm going to drill out that primer pocket. Drilling brass a little harder than what it seems.
okay, I got the hole drilled. It is uh, a little harder than you think drilling through brass, especially if just cheap drill bit and a hand drill. But uh, basically all I did was use a pair of channel locks to hold it in place. Play script's probably been better. Laid it up here on the bench. Well, this is a it was a project I had for something else, but uh, set up here on the bench, took the drill. Finally got drilled all the way through. Now I got to uh, chamfer, deburr the edge, then drill a small hole in the side all the way through to hook a wire on it. And see, this will drop right down into the uh, load master and then your good primers that get pushed through your priming arm will fall in here and then the wire as you take shell plate off and you pick pick this up out of your load master and then you dump your good primers back out you're not wasting any so that was a neat, neat little mod to do to your load master to catch uh, your good primers I'll be back in a minute after I get this. Like I said, I'll use the uh, Lyman electric uh, case prep station. Use the inside case mouth chamfering bit. Chamfer the outside of this. And then may take the Dremel and kind of polish this up. Or not polish it, but take the burrs off of it. Uh, and then like I said, I've got that one hole left to drill and put a piece of wire on it. I'll try to show you those steps too. Okay, after a couple of attempts. I had, had some issues. That's the first one that I made, and I was trying to drill the hole right here, and it took off part of it. Okay, but you can see that the, the deal is to take out everything where the primer pocket was. So you can basically just have a little cup. Okay, here was my second attempt. This one come out better, but it's not really the way I wanted it. I got the hole drilled into the side here that you can see, but it also, the drill bit got off center and took part of the, almost took the uh, rim off. But that, that's still for the wire that you're going to hang on it, so you can pick it up out of your load master. That still works. Now this is the last one I just did, which, as you can see, it is open completely up. It's uniform, and right there is the hole for to put the wire in. So, like I said, you drop this down right in front of where your uh, primer feed system is. You take a shell plate carrier off. I'll show you how to do that. You have a wire here so you can reach down and pick it up, bring it out, and any of your good primers are caught in this and don't fall down into the, the ram. I've got another one to do. A buddy of mine wants me to make him one of these. So I'll probably give him this one that I just finished up. Like I said, and I don't know if I can turn the light on or not. Like I said, as you can see, that's pretty much opened up all the way. Nothing for any primers to get caught on. It's smooth. I'll probably give him that one. And then I'll keep this one for myself. Like I said, it opened up part of the rim right there. You know, it's still all good. Uh, it's not perfect hole, but it'll serve the purpose. But uh, that's then the uh, the experiment for today is to make this. And of course, I put a ended up having to put a vise on the table or on the bench to hold this so I could drill it. Uh, I went to a little bit larger bit 
that's the reason why that one ended up with the rim almost cut off because it wasn't perfectly centered when I started. This one was fine, it was perfectly centered and uh, ate right through it pretty good. It's a little bit bigger than an 8 millimeter, which is actually a 5 16 This is probably, this bit is probably an 8.7, 11 30 seconds bit. Uh, and it's actually a metal bit where the other one was, it was pretty much a universal bit, but it was made in China. But, uh, again, I'll show you how you install this here in a minute. I've got one more of these to make. I ended up also, to make the little hole right there, I used a Dremel bit that just has a, I don't know if that's for uh, engraving or what, but it's just a little old Dremel bit that uh, with an end device I was able to drill through to make that. And it's just a small wire that you use. I got a, I've got, I got some around here somewhere. I've got to see if I can find it. Uh, and uh, we'll be back and I'll show you how that goes into the uh, Loadmaster. Okay, you can see how I got the casing in here. And I just used the drill by hand, drilled in this way. So I got uh, the whole primer pocket removed. Then once I was done with the drill, I got the Dremel with that little bit on it. Okay, and then while it was still in the vise, I just took my hand, I'll get this hand out of the way, but I had my hand there. And the vise held it into place, and I was able to put that right down in there to make that hole. Now, and I had a, got a nail through this side, and that basically kept the casing set and level so it wouldn't pivot down in the, in the vise. Okay, now I found my wire. I can't remember what this wire was for. It's back in my amateur radio days whenever I was fooling with uh, radio equipment and making things for that just a real thin green wire and here's what I've done I've attached it to the case through that hole basically just a little loop on top basically so I can just hold it like that okay now I'll take you over to the loadmaster show you what you got to do to put it in now first thing you got to do is you got to remove your shell plate. And keep that rubber O ring in there. Remove the, the ejector. Then you want to move, remove the shell plate. And remove the, uh, hmm. so I don't know what to call it, uh, rod. You got to remove that, and as you can see, let me see if I can zoom in there where you can see this. Okay, and if you'll notice, if I work this with my finger, if there was any primers, okay, you see the rod there. Okay, if there's any primers in there, and this was working. This could push, like if you had one primer there and it didn't feed or didn't seed in the primer, put another one fall in there, it would push it. It'd fall down in this hole right here. Right down in there. Okay. Well, 
this shell plate is open all the way in. Oops. The shell plate's open all the way through the ram. Like I said, the ram is where it stores your uh, spent primers. Generally, it falls into this hole right here. Okay, to keep from losing your new primers, you take this, drop it right down in there. Now, of course, this wire is going to be in the way. So I've got to have a place for this wire to go. And keep it out of the way. Could be mine is dirty. There we go. And just kind of push the bar back out of the way. Now that casing, I have to take the camera off. Bear with me. I'm trying to show you. So I get the camera in. That casing is right down there. So now, when this actuator will push a primer, if it's a good primer, it falls in there. It won't fall down into the ram with all the spent primers. Then all you gotta do is pull that up, get your good primers out of that casing, and they're not damaged, they're not down there for all the dirty primers, and you can reuse them. It's just a little mod. Like I said, a guy from Sweden has a YouTube video on it. He shows it. Of course, he's got his dies off the top so you can see straight down. But uh, you just put that in there. You put uh, your uh, uh, actuating arm back on. Put the shell plate carrier back on. Put your ejector back on. Put the screw the nut down out of sight out of mind only you know that's where your good primers are falling if they're going through so that's it for the mod uh, hope it's helpful uh, the guy I think can't remember what his uh, YouTube channel was I'll try to list it in my description when I post it but that's the mod it's easy to make and easy to install. Thanks for watching.